What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.2 beta 4 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got iPadOS 18.2 beta 4, macOS Sequoia 15.2 beta 4, watchOS 11.2 beta 3, and then earlier in the week we got tvOS 18.2 and visionOS 2.2 beta 3. But of course in this video we're talking about iOS 18.2 beta 4. So you can see the size of this update came in at 788.5 megabytes on my 16 Pro Max, which was coming from a beta 3. So a pretty large update there. If we go into our settings, general about, the new build number here is 22C5142A. So we do have an A at the end of the build number, which indicates we are very likely to see the RC release next. And we'll talk more about that near the end of this video. And if we go down to the modem firmware, that is 1.21. 0.04 on the 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.2 beta 4? And the first thing is inside of the mail application. And you'll notice now that the icons over here to the left of the sender are now rounded off. So here's what it looked like on beta 3 on the left. Beta 4 is over here on the right. So it used to be a square with a point. Now it's more rounded off. It looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. And speaking of mail, if we go into our settings and go into our notifications and then go down until we get to the mail application, we have a change in here as well. So go down to the bottom and go to customize notifications. And up top here for our badge count, that now has a graphic and a description. So before on beta three over here on the left, we just had the option to change between showing the badges for primary and all unread. Now we have more of a description and a you know graphic to show us what we're actually changing there. Also the title up top now says badge count instead of badges. And also it says unread messages in primary now instead of primary unread messages. And since a lot of people were confused about how this feature works when it first came out, here's Apple's description. So they say choose to see only the number of unread messages categorized as primary or all unread messages for every inbox. And then if we head into our messages settings, we have some changes in here. So it's showing location for me up top. I could have sworn I've seen that before, but you can see here beta four versus beta three on the left. Left. Same with sensitive content warning that now shows up there. And then below that, we have default messaging app. So this was its own section before, but now it seems to be broken up into the individual apps as well. So we have default messaging app right there, but for some reason, WhatsApp didn't show up for me. And you can see that if you go into your settings and go into apps at the top where it says default apps, we now have a subtitle under that that says manage default apps on iPhone. And when you tap on that, everything in here is the same. Oh, and also App Store has been moved under the apps section now. So before App Store is right here on the previous page, but now that's inside of the apps section. And speaking of setting a default application, we have another change related to that. If we go into our settings and go to search, we now have an option here for search engine. So that was not showing for me in beta three. And now when you go in there, you can set your default search engine. Now, of course, you've been able to set your default search engine inside of your Safari settings for quite some time right there. But this is new in the search section in your settings. We have a change to the camera control on the iPhone 16 series. So if you go in to your settings and go to camera and then to camera control and then scroll down to the bottom we have a quick shortcut to the accessibility settings for our camera control. Before, there was nothing down there at the bottom, and at this time, it just takes us into those accessibility settings. And speaking of the camera control in photos, inside of the photos application, the changes from beta three persist with beta four. So this got a lot of mixed reactions. I personally am not a big fan of this, but you can see that when you have an image right there, your other images, the little carousel down here, is covering up part of the image until you tap. And then when you tap again, you can kind of see those images covering up certain parts of the text on this image. So that's obviously only for the tall images like so, but still not a big fan of that change. I'm wondering if Apple's gonna change it back or if it's just gonna stay this way. Because before in iOS 18, I liked how it showed you know the full kind of zoomed out image and then you tapped on it to get it into full screen. So a lot of people are split on their opinions on this, but this is remaining here in beta four. So it looks like it's gonna ship with 18.2. We also have a change to visual intelligence. So if you launch 
launch visual intelligence and you point your camera at something and then you press on the ask button right here which is going to ask chat gpt what it sees you'll notice a difference here so it says asking chat gpt so let me go to my screenshots you can see beta 3 on the left beta 4 on the right and now says asking chat gpt up top instead of working with chat gpt and then down here at the bottom before it just said ask chat gpt now it says ask about details and speaking of chat gpt if you go into your writing tools right here and then go to compose or describe your change so we'll go to compose and then i type in make funny for example you'll notice that after we input something on the compose we no longer have this yellow arrow pointing backwards so that was kind of redundant and it didn't actually do anything in beta 3 so that yellow arrow there has been removed with beta 4 and now the refine with ChatGPT text input section there takes up the entire screen and if we tap on one of these suggestions down here you'll see that if we go ahead and input that you can see once again that we have that yellow arrow there as well even though we have the forward and back options so this screen also looks slightly different and also the previous and next iteration buttons right here no longer have a highlight when you're on the latest iteration like they did in beta 3. in the find my application if you go on to one of your air tags and go down to lost air tag and go to show contact info the phone and the animation now has the dynamic island whereas before it just had some futuristic iphone that does not exist also a bug fix that somebody pointed out in the discord server is that whatsapp calls are now showing up in the phone application again so that was a bug on previous betas but that appears to be fixed now with beta 4. and speaking of bugs and bug fixes we do have the release notes for 18.2 beta 4 and unfortunately a lot of the main bugs are still classified as known issues without a fix. So the main ones that I'm talking about are messages where messages might not appear in the messages app until you reboot. And then of course, my big one that you guys have seen here on the channel a lot is for stickers. So it says stickers might not appear in the emoji keyboard or in the sticker sheet. And of course I did try the workaround, even though I didn't have an alphanumeric one, I did try that workaround and that did not fix it. So fortunately I still have my stickers. Like if we go in here and go to my stickers, you can see that at least we have our stickers here in beta four In beta three they all just disappeared after installing the updates but they are here at the start with beta 4 which is a good sign however we still have all these empty dots right there that I'm hoping gets solved soon and I would assume that with the release of beta 4 more people are going to be able to get in to the image playground application so if you still don't have access to image playground let me know in a comment down below because I feel like at this point most people do have access but I would expect additional improvements to the genmoji and also image playground with this update and we do also see some updates to the models as well courtesy of shrimp apple pro so it looks like they added a safety guardrail for visual intelligence and also curated prompts in image playground now as far as the performance and battery life goes i would expect performance to get a minor bump here with this fourth beta mainly because we do have an a at the end of the build number and also i did run a geekbench test here and we scored a 34 84 on the single core and an 85 74 on the multi -core core which are both pretty high and you can see here how that compares our first run with beta 3 was a 3470 so it's higher here in beta 4 and our multi-core was an 8401 and that's also higher here in beta 4 compared to beta 3 so I would expect performance to see a minor boost here with beta 4 and hopefully with the RC and the final release as well now when it comes to battery life you guys will have to let me know what I started this video off with in terms of battery life because I think battery life might also see a minor jump here so it does seem to be a little bit better for me here on beta 4 so far of course I don't really have much time you know to confirm that this absolutely has better battery life just by overall first impressions from a little under two hours of using it it does seem like battery life might be a little bit better than at beta 3 which would be great because my battery life has not been great but we'll have to see how Apple intelligence and the chat GPT integration impact that battery life because for me that's been the biggest downside for battery life at least in 18.2 okay so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is most likely going to be iOS 18.2 RC. I do believe that beta 4 is the final beta for 18.2. And if that's the case, we should be seeing the RC build of iOS 18.2 
potentially next week. Now, I know a lot of people, myself included, have constantly said how Apple does not release anything on the week of Thanksgiving. However, things are a little bit different this year with iOS 18. So I think there is a slim possibility that we do see the RC release next week, maybe on the 25th on that Monday. Now, that's just a possibility. Of course, we could skip next week, which is what Apple usually does with these software updates. And then if that were the case, we might see the RC or even the final release right away on December 2nd. So if we see the RC on December 2nd, that means that we will see the final release on December 9th. So it really just depends. Nobody really knows at this point. So I would say that, you know, just bank on it coming at some point within the first half of December, either the week of the second or the week of the ninth. But anyways, guys, that is iOS 18.2 beta 4. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those future iOS 18.2 videos. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.